Have you ever had the experience where you've watched something, maybe a TV show or a play or a movie, and then you watch it again and you pick up stuff that you didn't the first time? And part of that's because there's so much new information coming in the first time that maybe it just wasn't possible to pick it all up. Well, if you and I want to jump into the world of networking, which is an amazing field, by the way, uh, sometimes the very first time we see it or talk about it and we work with others who are in the field, there's terms and acronyms and diagrams that are being used that we may not be as familiar with as somebody else who's been in the field. So in this nugget, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to walk you through some of the common devices that we'd see on a network, take a look at some of the benefits of why we do networking to kind of ease into the process of the big picture of why we have networks and how they function. So let's go ahead and use this topology, which is a fancy word for saying like a diagram or a picture of how the network is connected. And, and some of the benefits of having a network is that if we have a couple of users, let's imagine we have Bob at this computer right here, computer two, and we have a user named Lois, and she's sitting it here at computer one. If those two users need to share something, maybe it's a file or they need to work with a common, like a, a list of customers that's kept in the database, instead of keeping that information locally on their individual computers, that information could be stored on a server and then Lois could access that data on the server and Bob could as well. And that, that's a huge benefit of having networking to be able to share resources and access servers that are providing content without having to have all that information on each of the local computers. And some of the common things that we're going to have on networks include network devices. And network devices could include computers like computer one and computer two and computer three. It can include servers that are connected to the network. It could include printers and it could include mobile devices like iOS and Android devices. And all of these network devices have something in common. They have a network interface card. And the acronym for that is a NIC or NIC. Sometimes that's referred to also as a network adapter or network card. And most network cards today are built in to the device, to the computer. In the old days, we had to actually get a separate circuit board and install it in a computer. But most of our computers today, whether they're desktops or laptops or mobile devices, come with some type of a network interface card already built into them from the factory. And regarding network interface cards, they could be either a wired network interface card where we use a physical cable that connects to that network interface card to give it connectivity to the rest of the network, or it could be wireless. So in the case of a wired connection, it would look something like this. There would be a little connection here on the computer on the network interface card. Then we run a cable that leads to this device that's referred to as a switch. So that's an example of a wired connection. On mobile devices and devices that have built-in wireless network interface cards, the way they connect to the network is they use wireless signals, radio frequency, to connect from themselves over to a device known as an access point, an AP for short. And then that access point, it has physical connectivity to the network. And that's how a wireless device using Wi-Fi gets its access to the network. And so if we have a user here like Bob, and let me actually use a different color. Let me use black there. So if we have Bob here who's trying to access the internet, his traffic, the, the information that he's requesting is going to leave his network interface card, go up through the cable that goes up to what's referred to as a switch. Now a switch is just a network device that is purpose built to move data across the network. We'll take another nugget and we'll take a look at the details of how a switch operates. But for now, just realize that the switch is a network device that's often used in networks to forward data towards its destination. So the traffic from Bob would go up to the switch. The switch would forward it over here to the router. The router would forward it over here to the firewall. I'm just following the direction from Bob's computer out to the internet to the server. And then the firewall would forward it to this router. This router would forward it to another set of routers until finally that data arrives at the server. And once it arrives at the server, the return traffic then could go back all the way through the network until that reply traffic gets back to Bob. And each of these devices in the path, routers and firewalls and switches, they all have their unique responsibilities as far as how do they move that data towards the server or back to Bob respectively. So in this nugget, I just wanted to chat with you and introduce you to a few details about the computer networks, including that the devices that connect to the network are going to do so using a network interface card, sometimes called a network adapter or a NIC. And those cards could be either using a physical cable that connects over to a switch, or they could be using a wireless technology that connects over to an access point, which is connected to a switch. Then furthermore, we're going to have switches, 
routers, and firewalls. I just wanted to point out what those look like from a graphical representation from a topology page. And in the next video, we'll take a look at what some of the physical devices actually look like that are being represented by this topology. So I'll see you in that next nugget. Meanwhile, I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.